morning, George of the Word. Good morning. Uh, a couple of announcements. <laughs> I uh, talked to Tracy oh, a little while ago. I said good morning, and, uh, she said she has not walked yet, but she's just about ready to start being able to get up and uh, walk. So she might be a week or two away, but she'll be back. First thing she's going to do once she can walk is she's going to go and step on that horse's face. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that horse stepped on the face. So. Well, also, it was over last night we saw uh, Mark Bueller. She's, uh, well, she was having a, a, a better night. She has good days and bad days. She has a brace upon her neck. Boys, while I'm bracing, uh, yeah. she can't, you know, she can only turn like this. She can't turn her head, but she can go up and back, but she can't look down or move her head up and down. And everybody's taking turns uh, taking care of her. Uh, we were just talking about your mom, Peg. And so, anyhow, keep her in prayer. She misses here, and she'll be back as soon as. But seven more weeks on that brace on her neck. But she said the doctor said in six months the pain should be gone. Shouldn't have any more pain after six months. But she still has good days and bad days out there. So keep her in prayer because we sure do miss her. And we have our brother Joe back there. Joe needs some, uh, he's been wanting someone to. Go ahead, Joe. Stand up and tell the folks your situation. Yeah, my situation is that. Since i become ill, my weight has gone from 155 down to 138. Now, part of that is due to the surgery I had at the end of January. And I'm not a chef. I'm not a cook. I take care of my breakfast and other things. But I need a good nutritional meal once a day. And I'm perfectly willing to pay for it. I don't want charity from anybody. Is there anyone that might, maybe once a week or something, could provide a meal. I'll come and get it unless you're really far away so that I can sustain myself and get my weight back. It's not good to lose 17 pounds. So what we need is about six or seven people that would come and cook one day a week. I'll come and cook for you. I hope you like chili. <laughs> I like chili, but I'm not sure my tummy can. Like Check your fire extinguishers. <laughs> uh, what we need, folks, is we need to have some folks that can come and give you, cook you one meal a day. Now, Albert's been helping him, but yeah, the situation with Albert, he kind of, yeah, he, he causes you more pain than, uh, we, we had a phenomenon happen here. I'll do it day. if he likes bologna. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, my favorite. We had a phenomenon happen here on a Thursday. Albert showed up for, for breakfast like he normally does at about 1 o'clock. All the food was gone this time because the painters ate it all. Whatever was left, the painters ate it. <laughs> and, they, and Albert was really upset. He was really upset. Yeah. But uh, what did you tell him back there? Brian, well, you I told him if he comes in time, you know, then you would have a meal. But he, I said he, he always comes at 1 o'clock and he stays till like 7 o'clock at night. But, and we, we show them like, like breakfast is in the morning and then lunch. <laughs> yeah. yeah so you're, we, telling, you're telling them you operate on Eastern time, not Hawaii time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, well, anyhow, that's what's going on there. Um, also, uh, the Tom Lee. What's your first time having my. My, the Tom, uh, Kathy Tom, the lady that was coming here with, with Marge, her, she got into a car wreck so she doesn't have a car, that's why she hasn't been back. She no longer has a car. Uh, so maybe keep her up there, she's had a lot of, a lot of problems too. Our grandma here is going to be believing that she's going to live with her daughter in June. And is, is that Missouri? Yes. And then... Uh, uh, you'll have someone to take care of you 24 7. They can cook for you. They're going to put you in nursing home. Yeah. Oh. Well, we're going to miss you here, but we're going to have you where someone can take care of you all the time. Because, uh, 
You know, we know as, as it gets as you get older, it gets tougher and tougher. Oh yeah, man. Uh, I went. I have my surgery. I'm so blessed that uh, my chest looks like a road map now. I got so many scars on there, but uh, it just was. Uh, the whole thing went very, very well. What did they do? They just cut me open to see what was in there. Looking for a heart? Oh, they removed it. Yeah, looked about my heart. Okay. They removed four growths in there, Grandma, that I had. It used to be you would do that, you'd be in the hospital for four or five days. <laughs> now you go in there. But I learned something, too. They give you a choice of anesthesia. It's one, two, and three. Take three. Okay. Because, uh, what happens is they they stitch you up on the inside and they glue you up on the outside. And the anesthesia they give you, the one is they just totally numb you up but you're totally awake. The two is they semi-numb you and you're semi-awake. And three is they put you out totally. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, I know that now because I could feel every stitch. Boy, every time they put it in, you could feel every one and it took a while. But uh, anyhow, I was out of there by what, by 10.30? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, yeah. One out of five came out of 10. Yeah, one out of five came out of 10. And you know, it used to be. That's amazing. You'd be in the hospital five or six days. Yeah, you're right. Or something like that. Yeah. And then I saw a very strange event. They had one of them transgenders there done when we had to the waiting room. Uh, pardon? I said, you already, I'm laughing, he's, he's wondering why, and I said, you already told us this, this is funny. Yeah, you ought to have seen this. I've never seen shoes so high in my life, was there? They were that high, weren't they? still at four. And, uh, yeah, but from the back, I, as it walked by me, I didn't see his face, but walked by me from the back, very thin, wearing a, a long red wig. It looked like a woman from the back with him heels. But when he turned around, he had about a three-day growth there. Oh, so, God. I almost broke into that song. U G L Y, you ain't got no alibi, but I didn't. But I was thinking about it. But anyhow, I, mean, it, I can tell you one thing: all the all the old vets sitting around there, uh, he could tell they weren't smiling at him. <laughs> Pastor, I'd like to make one comment. I'm not expecting anyone to give me a gourmet meal. People cook, and most of the families here, I'm sure the lady of the house does it. If you have anything left over from your main meal or a good meal, that's what I need to get this weight off. We're going to make, we're going to take care of you, Joe. Okay. okay, but I don't want to in, in, overboard anybody. Have you, have you looked into Meals on Wheels? They bring you meals, meals on meals, meals is day. mediocre for stuff. I need good nutrition. Now that's what I've Yeah, heard. that's part of the problem. Yeah, I mean, even when I get uh, a few days a week, I get a. Uh, it was, I guess, some of that food on Meals on Wheels is pretty bland. Yeah, you're better well, I don't care about rations. That. Yeah, it's almost like it's, it's not good. I have to have nourishing food. So do most people. If, if, if I didn't have this weight problem, I wouldn't care a bit. But if 17 pounds have gone down in about two months. That's not uh, good. Well, we're going to work on Kevin and I, Thank we're going to come over to make Peking duck. Peking duck. Now, we'll be, working, we'll be working on that. We'll be working on that. Okay. I don't know. There's a bunch of ducks that come by. We can run one over here. Yeah. Where to get a duck otherwise? Oh, yeah. Announcements. Yellow building. We got uh, the annual chili cook off April, Saturday, April 23rd. We're going to be out there at about uh, uh, noon. And then on the same day, you have a protest at Planned Parenthood. Yeah, we got. we have another. Uh, yeah, another Planned Parenthood uh, test. I think you have, yeah, I'm half asleep still. That extra hour hurt. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's supposed to be on April 23rd also, so. In the morning, time, though. In the morning, yeah. Uh, what was the last time, 9 to 11 or 10 to 12? Whatever it was. It was 10 to 12. Yeah, I think it will probably be the same time. Um, too much going on right now. They haven't, uh, you know, done more than say we're going to do it. And I think it's national. I'm told it's national. Yeah. So. Okay, any other announcements for fast? We're going to get into this one's message. Okay. Oh, does anybody, uh, anybody want to have a, a dinner for Resurrection? Okay. On Resurrection Sunday, uh,
be the, the other church out there, Cortland, they're growing in numbers pretty rapidly, pretty soon. They're probably, they may just pass us up here. Of course, if we keep losing people, you know, uh, from horses and everything else, who, who knows? Where. Anyhow, um, we were wondering, uh, what I wanted to do is talk to them about having our, our Resurrection Sunday service together. They really enjoyed it when they come up here last time to meet all you folks and we had the dinner. They really enjoyed coming and meeting you. So, but I was, what we were wondering this morning, there's a lot of people that uh, are single people, they don't have a family, they don't really have anything to do on Resurrection Sunday. And I was wondering, what do you ladies think? Do you think uh, it would be good to maybe have a little Resurrection Sunday dinner here for the folks that uh, don't have a family or a place to go on, on, on Sunday? I mean, we are a church family. So what do you think? How many would like to uh, like have a dinner here and have spend Resurrection Sunday? Uh, and it would be nice for me once to be able to not have to do, to have, to have a little time off too. I could spend some time. I got a family too. So how many think it would be a good idea to have like a meal here? Raise your hand. Hi, I know you would coupon. Huh? <laughs> Hi, folks. Okay, Joe, coupon. All the women got their hands down. <laughs> okay, you'll all go hungry. All right. All right. Well, I'm still going to fight them off for the morning service. Yes, coupon. I'd like to get some sort of a meat dish, but I'm not sure what what would be appropriate. I'm, I was thinking about the lamb chops, but I don't know if I can go that steep. <laughs> yeah, you might have noticed that no hands went up with yours. Yeah, well, I'm the only one who's trying to volunteer to bring some food, I guess. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't you bring in somebody to help you eat it? Joe, are you willing? Sure. Okay. Yeah. No, the hands didn't you go too. up, so we're working. Well, what kind of meat would be appropriate? Ham. Ham? Okay. Uh, ham or, you know, ham, ham would be appropriate. Uh, a lot of people have a resurrection Sunday ham. Okay. So, bring them. Yeah. We'll bring them. We'll get some hams and stuff. And then the people that didn't raise their hand can't have any. Yeah, uh, all this has got some... We'll eat it right in front of them. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's get started. Uh, are you ready, John? Where'd John go? You ready to roll? Sub sandwiches. That right? meatball subs are not delicious and they get right prime uh, yeah, there roast beef. Else. Oh, they got them all over the place. The Subway. Oh, Subway. Yeah, Milkfield. Walmart. Subway, you can add as much to you as the sandwich as you want. All kinds of meat. Well, while he's doing that, I'm going to be talking a little bit about now. The House Divided is the title of this message. And boy, are we seeing that. Okay. Wow. Um, wow. We even have some people, I think, that aren't here today, I believe, because uh, uh, they're angry um, that we're not supporting Donald Trump. Okay. But there's a reason why. Now, it might come down to where we don't have a choice to, to support Donald Trump. Uh, 
Yeah, that's it what comes I down to between him and Hillary, folks. Well, we know, we know how bad Hillary is, and we know how bad Bernie Sanders is, and so uh, I'm going to be getting into that this mm -hmm. morning. A good thing to go to uh, would be the Bible. The Bible trumps the internet all the time. Amen. Oh, that is a perfect point. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what God's Word has to say on that. Because God's Word, the Bible, has a lot to say on that. And as we go through it today, um, that way you realize why we're taking the route that we're taking. Uh, because we're holding to the Word of God. But it's caused a lot of division, a whole lot of division in what is to be the church here today. And so, we're going to be... There's Mike Keenan, he just came in, he spent him and his crew three days here painting. And you folks might notice how nice this All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot brighter, and they look a whole lot better. Yes. Now it doesn't matter if the lights work or not. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah, uh, Pastor, I unplugged all that stuff and kept behind that bench. So, so you're the reason nothing's working. Yeah, that's right. I figured you guys could set your own little plugs back. You know where they go. to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church this morning at 14781 Sperry Road, Newberry, Ohio. I'm Pastor Sanders. The title of the message this morning is A House Divided. You're listening to us today on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That is 104.3, the Eagle. And so, as we start here today, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 3. And in Genesis chapter 3, we're going to take a look at the temptation of Eve. Uh, there's three points made very clear, but we see the very same thing happen over again as uh, Satan uses his wiles, if you will, or his techniques. So let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you should die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall surely, not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. 
And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, um, again, Satan, remember the beginning. Why did he want to destroy man? Well, he rebelled against God. Uh, Satan, who was in the throne room of God, realizing that at some point that uh, the angels were going to serve men, that men would be judges over angels. And, and Satan, the greatest of the creations, the, the most intelligent, the most beautiful, the most powerful created being, he just wasn't going to tolerate having uh, puny people rule over him. <coughs> so now, uh, what does he do? He takes a look in, <coughs> and he kind of looks and appears and he studies Adam and Eve. And he looks at their personalities and he looks at their strengths and he looks at their weaknesses. And he comes to the conclusion that it was the woman would be the easier target where it come to this servant. And so that's where he went. Now here you're going to see that there's three things here in the temptation of Eve. One, uh, the, the desire to satisfy the lust of the flesh. One, for food. She wanted, she looked at it, it was good to eat, so she went for it. Uh, the desire to satisfy the lust of the eye. You see where it says, uh, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired. And then the lust of the flesh to be like God desire to be like God. When Satan, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good for evil. And so we see those three things in the temptation of Eve, and of course, you know who put that into her head, right? And if we go to Matthew chapter 4, we'll see a pattern here. In Matthew chapter 4, now this time, Uh, Satan doesn't have such an easy target here. Then was Jesus led to the, by the Spirit and to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? When he had fasted forty days and forty nights, it was afterwards a hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Well, see, so here now he tries to tempt the Lord uh, with, for food. And I can tell you, after 40 days and 40 nights, sometimes after 40 minutes, you can get awful hungry. Right? Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so the idea came that he was going to try to tempt him with food first. And uh, then the second temptation... Then the devil taking him up into a holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest I at any time I would dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, you see, here, uh, He's trying to, the, the desire to be like God was on Satan's part. I mean, that was awful nice of Satan. He, he must have been listening to Karl Marx and maybe Bernie Sanders because, uh, you know, he was, he was offering back the Lord Jesus Christ part of the world that he created. You see? I mean, Christ was the creator. Remember what the Bible says? What belongs to God? The earth and the fullness thereof. So that was also nice of Satan to offer back to God. His creator, by the way, a little bit, you know, of what he had created. And then, here, and again the devil taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said unto them, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee henceforth, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship thy Lord thy God, and him only shalt thy serve. Now, here he took him up, and now it was the, the trying to satisfy the lust of, of the eyes. Again, here is, is the creation 
that God, that Christ himself had created. And Satan was offering back again to him what belonged to him. And so we see here in both instances, Satan uses the same three temptations. What worked so well with Eve, again, because of her lack of discernment, was, was a total failure with the Lord and for three reasons. One, uh, Jesus had, he had been prepared for the tempting. Two, God cannot sin. God cannot sin. Amen. And three, the lack of discernment due to pride was Satan's downfall to begin with. That got him in all of his trouble anyhow, right? What comes before a fall? Pride. Pride. Now, again, the tactic here is to divide and conquer. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And one of the things that the devil uses today, and I'll start all the way back in Genesis chapter 6, is demonic possession. Uh, And so, <clears throat> as we take a look at that, there's no way that, that he is going to give that up. By the way, uh, he had like an unholy alliance, okay, with the demons. As, as today, you see an unholy alliance between radical Islam and communism. Uh, they hold it together. Uh, and as we go to Matthew chapter 12, starting with verse 22, we read this. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and, and he healed him, insomuch as the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed with it and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their every thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall he then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom you do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out the devils in the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Or else, how can one enter to a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except the first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me. He gathereth not with me, scattereth abroad. Where if I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be given him. But whoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, what is he talking about? That word, their world, or a, aeon, meaning this age or the age to come. Now, this is called the unpardonable sin. This is one that a lot of people are concerned about. <coughs> this was a sin. The unpardonable sin is not the same as the unforgivable sin. And there's a sin unto death also. Now, the unpardonable sin was a sin committed by the national leaders of Israel. This was a national sin against the Holy Spirit. And he said that, that will not be forgiven them in this age this world, meaning the fifth dispensation, or the world to come, which is the sixth dispensation. That's what we are living in today. But it'll be forgiving true Israel, the remnant, during the, the tribulation period, at the end of the tribulation period. And so, here, we see that Barack Hussein Obama came preaching that he would be the most unifying president in all of American history, all I remember him doing it. Now, <clears throat> remember what, what Karl Marx, who was a practicing Satanist, taught. He said that uh, always do the opposite of what you say and always say the opposite of what you do. Keep people confused, keep people off balance, keep them uncertain. They're much easier to control that way. And 
folks, I'm going to tell you, that's exactly what you see in the media. That's exactly what you see out of a lot of these politicians today, right there. Uh, always doing the opposite. Now, Obama came, he, instead of being the most unifying, in my lifetime, I've never seen America so divided as she is today. And, and, and as he came, uh, he uh, divided the, the nation uh, all along racial lines. We, we, we have more race uh, problems today than we've had since, uh, since the 60s. Uh, his regime you know, fabricated a war on women. Remember this war on women? Right. Boy, the poor women. I mean, everybody was after the poor women, even though they outnumber the men in this country. And uh, the uh, Antichrist following declared war on Christ in his church. And he also declared uh, portions of the Bible, <coughs> such as Romans 1, uh, to be irrelevant. Remember what he was saying about Romans chapter 1? It was irrelevant. It was irrelevant. What did he say about Jesus Christ? He was a Savior, uh, but only one of many Saviors. And what did he say about his salvation? His salvation was a collective salvation. Okay? Meaning that's called communism, folks. That's what it's referred to, the collective. Their salvation, his salvation was not eternal life through believing on the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that there's uh, no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. No, that's not uh, what your collective salvation is. The collective salvation is this, that Christ returns back to the earth and uh, he takes the wealth of all of the wealthy, those the capitalists, and he, he uh, redistributes their wealth amongst the masses. Okay, that's what that's what they call salvation mess. And if you go into some of these apostate churches, they've got gospel tracts, and again, they've got with Jesus wearing um, bandanas and gun belts on him as a as a communist rebel. And so uh, he declared also Leviticus 18 as archaic and inconsequential. So let's take a look at what he declared. As we go, what is it that abomination, this man of great, great sin, declared uh, inconsequential? Starting with Leviticus 18, starting with verse 21. We read this. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of God. I am the Lord. In other words, child sacrifice. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. <coughs> I would call it a Barak abomination. Uh, neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therein. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there to. It is confusion. It was just, a, just out there on the internet a story about a Saudi Arabian who <coughs> was killed uh, by a donkey, because while well, he was trying to have sex with a bestiality. Uh, defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled, therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. And then if we go to Romans chapter 1, and you know, that was an interesting thing because here in New Orleans, when Katrina came in some years ago, uh, we had two pastors that had gone there to try to convince the mayor not to, to allow, they were going to have southern decadence when the sodomites came out and and, uh, and what they would do is they would come out and pray their sin in front of God. And so you had these two pastors who went there to talk to the mayor, and the mayor laughed at him and he took God's name in vain. Well, that mayor is in prison today. And uh, that's a good, huh? Nagel, and that's a good place for him. But uh, 
Bible says he will vomit, we just read it, he will vomit out the land. And that's exactly what happened with Amen. Katrina. Amen. The Sodomites went to have their southern decadence, and Katrina came in and they were vomiting out. Amen. And if we go to Romans chapter 1, starting in verse 24, and you see a lot of your younger people today, what they call millennials, they don't really understand because most of them are biblically illiterate. And they think that... Uh, there's no difference between this and say that it's dis uh, discrimination uh, for someone on a sexual basis. They have no understanding at all that God has condemned it, that that uh, <coughs> is, what, is um, what you call settled law. Amen. And God, you know, God doesn't care about, <laughs> he doesn't care about legislation. He doesn't care about polls. He doesn't care about public opinion polls. God's law, when he says, it stands. Heaven and earth will pass, but his words will never pass away. Amen. Amen. And so, he says, there is no place that you can go to hide from it. And that God is angry with the wicked every day. He's angry with the wicked every day. And in Romans 1, starting with verse 24, we read this. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. You know, it's the very same people that have no problem with killing little babies, um, but they have a real, real problem with killing animals for meat. Right. And for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves the recompense of the error which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which were not convenient. In other words, <coughs> God gave them over to a reprobate mind so they no longer can make a distinction between right or wrong. Common sense was totally uncommon, like it is today in liberalism. In liberalism today, common sense is totally uncommon. Uh, and if you were to watch it, we'll take a look at that. But I've been watching when uh, the other night in Chicago where they had the riots against Trump. Right. I was watching these people. And one of the things I did notice that uh, if you change the channels, they showed different views. But there was a group that looked like about 30 to 40 young men, all in their you know teens or early 20s. And they were all of many Middle Eastern persuasion, all the Syrians or Iraq, you know, looked like they were from Iran, Iraq, you know. They were there, Obama's Muslims were there, yep. in the midst of all of this with the communists and that un unholy alliance. Now, we go on and he says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisper. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing, now listen, here's the, here's the main thing here, here's the key verse, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. In other words, how many times have you heard people say, well, I might myself would never do that, but I am not going to judge somebody else that will. Mm. And you know what that means. I had a woman on some years ago, and uh, she used to run an abortion mill. She came out of it. You know, she got saved. And uh, somebody brought her to repentance. And, and that was the good Lord that brought her to repentance. But anyhow, she made a statement. She says, any time... You have any of these women say to you, I would never have an abortion myself. That's code words for it. at least they've had one. She said, you can guarantee they've had at least one. Okay, And she's one that came out of the business. 
And that's what you have with all of these people today say, well, I'm not going to, I would never do that. Yeah. You know, if I'm talking to somebody and uh, they tell me, well, yeah, I, I'm a liberal, I'll ask them flat out, do you have sex with animals? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they, uh, they act like they're surprised that I asked that question. Why would you ask me that? I said, well, because that's what liberals do. If you don't, <laughs> if you're a real liberal today, well, you can't condemn, you can't condemn them, can you? Nope. And they don't really know how to answer that. Okay. Now, if, if you ask them that question and their face just turns red and they don't say anything, uh-uh, boy, you got them. Anyhow, so, but you see, you know, Truth cuts through a lie, and those that hate the truth, to them, truth is, is, hey, look, I had here some of those that were in charge, and as Trump came out and he said, that was that moveon.org. That moveon.org was the same people that tried to get me off the radio program, of the, had the petitions going on, hate speech in the name of God crosses line. And here, here's my hate speech, okay? Recent ex uh, examples of Sanders' vitriolic tirades include uh, references to all women seeking affordable health care and workplace equality as whores. Well, what brought that on? Remember Sandra Fluke? Mm -hmm. Who wanted all of us to pay for her fornication medication? Okay. Uh, I said, we're not going to pay for your fornication medication so that you can go out there and, and feel free to fornicate. And uh, so, but this is how they twist these things. Uh, he calls, routinely refers to the president as abomination, guilty, and the Antichrist. No, I never said he was the Antichrist. I said he is an Antichrist. And he possibly could be the Antichrist. And uh, he says, <laughs> perverted and grotesque slander of programming that does not speak well of a Christian radio network. Here we go again. Uh, to those that hate the truth, the truth is the hate. And he says that uh, this is a critical junction where Americans need to come together. So in other words, you see, here's the thing about liberalism. that, uh, and, and, and for that group, for these people here, moveon.org, uh, they're out there screaming and shouting about freedom of speech. But freedom of speech only applies to them. You see, as long as that speech is what they agree with. So only they should have freedom of speech. A couple other things you have there, for example. Well, I guess I don't have my thing. You must have left them in my office. I had a couple other articles of some of what's going on up there today. Anyhow, going back to where I left off. Abomination, forced Planned Parenthood, and sodomy upon America. Demoralizing and sodomizing our military. Uh, encouraging young women and girls through Planned Parenthood uh, to become whores using Planned Parenthood tactics to accomplish uh, his agenda. Planned Parenthood, with your tax dollars, passed out books, uh, little comic books, and it says right in there how to make being a slut. They use that word right on the front, a positive experience. And some of the things they talked about, the different kinds of sex that they were encouraging people to have, I can't even talk about it. And then they also went ahead and said uh, that if you have AIDS, if you have AIDS, you're not required to tell any one of your sexual partners. Yes. Folks, do you understand? Planned Parenthood is about death, it's about death, it's about death, and it's about death. And so, in order to destroy America, Obama knows that he must complete the following. One, Divide among racial lines, boy, he's been doing that. Mm -hmm. Among gender lines, he's doing the best he can in that area. 
uh, generational lines. Well, they're doing that. They're trying to pit. Now, let's see if this makes sense. Here you have all of these millennials, these young, young kids out there to vote. Now they won't even pass laws where they can vote at 17 mm -hmm. just to get uh, these young with no life experience. Why? Because Bernie Sanders, now think yeah. about this. Here you have two old white Jewish people out there convincing uh, all of these, especially the young blacks, that that's all they care about is their well-being. Yeah. Well, we see what Obama's done for the young blacks in this country. Yeah. Under him, their unemployment skyrocketed. They're much, much worse off under Obama nation oh, yeah. than they were before. And here... Uh, as we take a look at that, he wants to divide amongst generational lines, amongst social class lines, and last but not least, um, um, amongst religions, promoting Islam over Christianity. Uh, he's, he condemns Christianity every turn he gets. In fact, he just hired a new czar, and the new czar that he hired, um, his job now 